everybody, Backyard Bullying here. Welcome to this week's Ponderous Wednesday. Now, if you're new to my channel or don't know, Ponderous Wednesdays are where I take a slow, leisurely, meandering ramble around an interesting and thought-provoking topic to stimulate some interesting discussion down in the comment section. And this week's topic is a very interesting one and one which I have uh, experienced a little bit of this week. And that is the question of, is buying silver and gold an addiction? Can it be an addiction? Can you get addicted to what you buy in such a way that you cannot see yourself either parting with it, selling it, or in my case here in the Backyard Bullion household, melting it? Every now and again, you get a piece come through and you just think to yourself, yep, yeah, that's that's in the perma stack. That's never going anywhere. That's mine. It's, uh, it's, you get that kind of golem moment. You go, my precious. And I got that moment when I picked up this Johnson Matthey bar recently. Now, before we just jump into all of this, I need to put my little disclaimer out there. What I'm talking about today is meant very much for entertainment purposes only. It's not financial advice. I'm not here to tell you what you should or should not do with your money uh, as it relates to buying silver and gold. And any financial decisions you make having watched this video are yours and yours alone. Now, silver being an addiction. I have made a video on this. I think it was over a year ago now, uh, sort of saying is... Uh, you know, buying silver and gold, can it be an addiction? Are you addicted to buying silver and gold? And there were lots of very funny comments, uh, you know, sort of like uh, AA type comments going, hi, my name is Silver, uh, whatever your name is, Silver Stacker, and I am a silver addict. Or, hi, my name is Backyard Bullion, and I'm a silver addict. And yeah, that was quite fun and funny, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the serious side of things here. I mean, silver as a metal is absolutely mesmerizing. It really is. Uh, and nothing can be more mesmerizing than picking up a giant heavy bar, whether it's 50 ounces, uh, you know, 100 ounces, a kilo bar. If you've just been buying one ounce rounds and you get your hands on a 10 ounce bar or a uh, 50 ounce bar, 100 ounce bar, you get that wow factor. You get that crikey, this is a heavy old piece. It's real wealth. It's sitting there in your hand. It feels real. You can feel the heat being absorbed away from your hand. And that all ticks the box, ticks the boxes in my uh, brain that's, you know, releasing those endorphins, releasing, releasing all those chemicals which go, yes, yes, that is good. I like that. That makes me happy. Uh, and that then leads to the question of, can you ever see yourself parting with something like this? Uh, you know, a lot of people out there, and I see it a lot in the comment section, will will be, you know, stacking for future generations or stacking for, uh, you know, basically preserving wealth and just not getting rid of that silver. For me, it's very much about a longer term style pension investment and preparing for, uh, you know, the, the basically the, the latter stages of my existence on this earth and uh, you know I have full intentions on selling a significant portion if not all of my precious metals before I shuffle off this mortal coil but that's best intentions you know sometimes you get certain things come through uh, and the inner collector in you certainly I have an inner collector I've been collecting coins and collecting uh, stamps and various other things cards and you know different collectibles ever since I was a small child and uh, you know the inner collector in me would be very, very sad to have to get rid of anything. And this Johnson Matthew bar is a prime example. So I'll tell you the story of this. I'm going to have to put it down though, because 50 ounces, one and a half kilos is not a light thing to hold in your hand for a very long time. So let me just get a bit of blood flow back into the arm and then I'll pick it up again and show it to you in all its glory. Um, but, you know, picking up a 50 ounce bar like this is a pretty cool thing. Uh, certainly when you pick it up as part of a scrap silver lot, which is basically meant for the melting pot. So uh, yeah, you kind of think to yourself, I can't put that in the melting pot, surely. And as much as I love creating uh, big chunky ripple bars like these two here uh, from all of the scrap silver that we pick up, Ah, the inner collector in me, the inner silver enthusiast, just could not bring myself to melt this Johnson Matthew bar. And I said to Mrs. Backyard Bullion, it's too good to melt. It's too good to melt. And the ever business-minded and present Mrs. Backyard Bullion looked at me and basically said, and I knew what she was going to say, and I, the inner side of me as well, wanted to say the same thing, which was, we can't keep it. You know, we're trying to run a small business here. If we kept everything and anything that came through uh, in terms of scrap metal, in terms of that kind of, uh, you know, just 
random bits of silver that came in, we would have a very defunct business. We would not be doing very well uh, in the long term. So we agreed that I would sell this bar rather than melt it. Now, yes, one could argue that uh, you could melt this bar. I could turn it into some of my uh, hand pulled silver creations and maybe make a little bit more money than if we just sold, sold it on again. But the inner collector in me, the inner silver enthusiast, the inner silver uh, appreciator was just aghast at the thought of melting this down. So we listed it for sale on the silver forum to make sure that it would, would go to a better home, to somebody who would look after it better than maybe I would in terms of wanting to melt it. Not that I think that I would. I, if I was having this in the long term kind of backyard bullion melting pot, it would be one of the very last pieces that got melted, I have to say. Uh, but at the same time, it's not going to it's not the way that we want to do business. It's not the way that we can do business. Of course, any small business, uh, you needs to be careful with you know, cash flow and uh, just general stock. So we decided that we would pass it on to somebody who might look after it and enjoy it a little bit more. So we listed it on the Silver Forum and it sold within a couple of hours and I can completely see why. It's an absolutely glorious old school silver bar. These are dated back from I think the 1980s. I did a little bit of research and found a good uh, kind of listing of all the kind of Johnson Matthew bars of the 50 ounce varieties. This wasn't a particularly low mintage kind of issue. I think there's something like 30,000 of these types of bars out there and you can see they've all got their different serial numbers. Uh, interesting that the, the mintage is like 30,000, but the, um, the serial numbers here go up to the 48s. I don't know whether that means they started at a certain serial number. I don't know. But anyway, the point is they are very cool. They're a bit of history. Johnson Matthew doesn't exist anymore. They don't create silver bars like this anymore. So, you know, it's a piece of history and I didn't want to just melt it down and, you know, destroy it. That would have been really sad for me. So we sold it on. And I have to say a huge massive thank you to the forum member who has purchased this because they have allowed me to keep it for the next couple of weeks until after Christmas into the early new year when we will then ship it out to them. So I get to enjoy it at least for a few weeks time before we say goodbye to it. But back to the original topic at hand, uh, you know, is it an addiction to buy these things? You know, that that sort of moment that I got it, the moment I picked it up, and it's the same for a lot of people who will find their, or who pick up their very first 50 ounce bar or 100 ounce bar or even kilo bars, you just get that wow factor. You get that moment where you think to yourself, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the start of a kind of an addiction, I suppose. I suppose if you're not worried about that and you can see your way to being able to sell these things in the future, uh, then that's fine. I like to think that I would have been able to melt or sell this down uh, if we'd kept it for that long-term perma stack, but the inner collector, inner collector in me is always going to be there thinking, yeah, maybe I'll keep hold of quite a lot of my stuff in the long term. Um, and you know, that's something to factor in. If you're a new stacker out there and you're looking to get involved with this, it's certainly to be aware of that, um, you know, there's, there's the kind of inner green demon that comes out when you get these things you know you get that kind of the golem moment as i call it where you uh, you find yourself sitting at your desk holding this 50 ounce bar going my precious uh, you know it really is like that sometimes so just be aware that that is a thing and that if you are a new stacker out there uh, that can be a bit of a money trap if you can't see your way to selling something then it, it can be a bit dangerous uh, you can also find that you'll be over purchasing if you see something that you just think you have to have you buy it be damned of the cost you know I've I've been victim to that if I've seen something I really like and I want to keep uh, for basically forever or for that long-term coin collection uh, you know overpaying for things it it kind of you rationalize it in your mind going well I enjoy it I love it I want to keep it and I'll never I'll never get rid of it so I'm going to enjoy it and I suppose that's kind of how proof coins work as well you know it's very much like that for like the snowman coin you know if people are buying that for 200 pounds on that flipping market you know that's well above odds certainly for the kind of three pounds worth of silver that's in one of those coins so can be quite interesting as a topic so I would love to know you guys opinion on whether you are addicted to gold and silver whether you are uh, you know in that category of you would never think of melting this bar never think of selling it if it got into your stack if it's something you would hold on to for that long term then do let me know 
And as always, if you liked this video, please put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media. If you want to get updates on future videos that I upload, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the alarm bell if you want to get a notification when future videos go live. In fact, I've just got another little thing I wanted to share with you guys. These little Christmas rounds were also in the same batch and we're going to focus these on In Focus Friday this week. Uh, but you know, similar situation. We got them in that batch and we were like, no, we can't, we can't melt them. We have to, it's Christmas, we can't melt them, it would be sacrilege. So yeah, you know, there's a whole host of different things which can come up as part of this whole topic of whether or not you would want to or, or are able to sell your silver in the long term. But anyway, look, I ramble on long enough. Thank you one and all for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic week ahead. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.